Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talkman House. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Uh, as you can see, we're not in our normal habitat today. We Where are we, Juana? We are in steamy, sexy, amazing Miami. Yep, we're in Miami, National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals Annual Conference. Uh, getting ready to go on stage here and speak in a minute. But what we want to do is we want to talk about the government shutdown and how that's going to affect the housing market. Because there potentially are some things that affect housing market, right? Right. Okay, so here's the headline. A government shutdown would disrupt the housing market in these surprising and painful ways. So there's maybe some good things, but maybe some bad things. Right. So one, in general, but without going into specifics, why would the shutdown have anything to do with housing? So um, real quick, things like loans, right? Uh, the IRS would be probably slow, even slower than they are to, to respond to, to requests for tax returns. Um, USDA loans, obviously th those are government loans. Those wouldn't be happening. Um, okay, so there is government processes involved. Right. Uh, the National Flood Insurance Program, okay. that you know, they would Im impact that as far as people uh, being able to get new policies, so then that would impact their ability to close on loans that require those. Uh, so all kinds of, of things like that. Plus, it would impact things like building permits because, you know, money trickles down uh, and all kinds of ways. Look, the government is so involved in all of our lives in so many ways, and especially in housing. There's a lot of money involved from the government in housing. Okay, here's the first quote. If Congress doesn't reach an agreement by Saturday, the many federal government services could grind to a halt. Mm -hmm. That could bring new challenges to Americans, the economy, and a housing market hobbled by high home prices. Mortgage rates topping 7% and a critical shortage of homes for sale. Okay, let's hit just a couple of these real quick. Mm -hmm. High home prices, govern really that has nothing to do with the government. Well, they kind of contributed to that. But no, but I'm saying is them shutting down or running doesn't no. affect, that's no. prices to supply and demand. Right. Okay. Shortage of homes for sale. Um, that doesn't really impact, that's not impacted by the government in, in that way. Okay, mortgage rates topping 7%. So that would be a different situation, right? Okay. So that's a different situation because uh, lenders would see more risk and because of that risk, they would charge a premium. So we could see mortgage rates rise with a government shutdown, uh, particularly if it's prolonged because that increases the risk, so uh, lenders are going to want to be compensated for that risk. Okay, here's a quote. The housing market is in a very fragile state right now, says Jim Tobin, President and CEO of the National Association of Home Builders. What we don't need is a government shutdown that further damages the housing market. How would home builders building less homes affect the resale market? If we have buyers trying to buy a home, there's not as many new homes being built, what does that mean? So, I mean, obviously, anything that hampers building, uh, hampers the, the supply of homes. Uh, I, I kind of take issue with his statement that housing is, that housing market is fragile. I don't think it's fragile. I mean, it, it, we're not in any sort of negative um, housing market right now, right? We can all agree on that. It is fragile from the perspective that uh, the lending is more fragile right now because it, it, we are talking about higher interest rates, and uh, the government shutdown does impact lending in so many ways, and some of them I, that I brought up. Okay. Negative equity would make a big difference, but right. o only about 1% of all homes in the U.S. have negative equity. Well, and negative equity really has nothing to do with the government shutdown for a right. few weeks. Okay. So the question probably is, well, how did last government shutdowns affect housing markets? So here we go. Four shutdowns have occurred over the past decade, so that's the last 10 years. Okay, so I would just want to bring that up for a moment. Four shutdowns in the past decade. Think of it this way. People who have been late with their credit card payments four times in the past decade. That's kind of like that. That's, that's what the government's doing. Okay. The last one was uh, in 2018 and stretched into early 2019. It lasted 34 days as President Donald Trump had wanted funding to build a border wall, which Democrats had opposed. How did, I mean... No, really, did the real estate market do anything negative yeah. with a 34-day shutdown? Like, no. did we even, did it blink? No, no. So it's not going to. I mean, it, it's only going to impact interest rates in the, uh, as far as the premium for uncertainty, and that's about okay. it. Uh, like I said, you know, particular loan programs will be affected as far as, like I said, you know, the IRS uh, tax transcripts, uh, flood insurance, USDA loans, VA loans, you know, things like that will be impacted. But 
as far as the market as a whole, no, not really. Here's another quote. If the government shut down lasts two to three weeks, it's not great, but it isn't a big deal for the economy or the housing market, said Mark Zandi, chief economist at Moody's Analytics. But a longer government shutdown could cause the economy to flatline, costing jobs and thus hurting housing demand. Home sales may also be affected directly by the shutdown if home buyers and builders aren't able to get permits, insurance they may need. So this is a negative. Mm -hmm. This is, hey, the economy slows, government people stop. But if a government worker stops paying their mortgage payment, let's say they, they're living paycheck to paycheck, so they just don't have the savings. They get thrown out and then they have to go rent. It's even worse for them. And what happens if they miss two or three payments? Didn't the last um, government shutdown, didn't they all get retro pay? They all got retro pay. And so. they didn't have to go to work. So they got a month off and then they paid them retroactively anyway. Right. So missing a month payment, wouldn't they wouldn't get foreclosed. No, not at all. And then remember, uh, all they have to do is they call up their servicer and say, hey, you know, I work for the IRS. And I'm I, here to help you. And I'm here to help you. Like, can you imagine this? You're you're the government employee that works for the IRS, and you call your servicer and you say, "Hey, hey, Mr. Servicer, um, you know, there's a government shutdown. I work for the IRS. I'm not getting paid right now, but I'll pay you back as soon as I get my uh, my back pay." Now, what's that servicer going to say? Instant foreclosure. <laughs> IRS, you're right. foreclosed. Like, uh, first of all, you know, they're, they're sitting there going, I, "I need to make friends with this person because they work with the, for the IRS." And second thing is. You know, they work for the government. They'll get their, their back pay. It's not a big deal. They may even waive the late fees. I wouldn't be surprised if they la if they waive the late fees. Where it becomes a problem is where people play off, where, where people just kind of hide their heads in the sand and don't contact a servicer and keep them in the loop. Look, talk to the servicer, let them know what's going on, and chances are that you can probably even get them to waive the late fees. Okay. However, rates which were above 7.5% on Wednesday are likely to come down once the government reopens. Mm -hmm. Why is that that risk premium going right. away, right? Exactly. So now but the so the lenders will be fast to tack on the risk premium. They will be not quite as speedy to um, reduce that risk pre premium, but but it will come down. Okay, here is another quote. This is actually good news. A long enough shutdown could also lead to lower mortgage rates. If a shutdown lasted long enough to hurt the economy significantly, the Fed could cut its rates. That could result in a mortgage rates going down. But Wanda, this doesn't affect, this doesn't help the supply of homes. Yeah. Mortgage rates going down just pushes up prices, which we don't really want. We just want more homes to be on the market for right. sales, right? Right. Okay. Uh, here's another quote. Many federal workers, contractors, and those who employment relies on federal funding will not get paid during a shutdown. Some will be furloughed. Others will be required to work without a paycheck like uh, essential people like the FAA, like air traffic controllers have to work still, even though they're right. not getting paid. Typically, government workers get back wages, but most other workers do not. So if you work for the government directly, you'll get back wages. But if you work for a, a company that supports the government, but you're paid by a private employer, a lot of times you don't get wages because the government doesn't back pay those people that only pays their own employees, right? Right. And the people, look, the government employees are not the people that I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about all the supporting jobs. So let me give you an example. Um, you work at a restaurant that is in a downtown area where there are a lot of government buildings, and now these people are not coming to work for a few days or a few weeks, and so they're not buying lunch. Well, guess what happens to your tips? They disappear because those people aren't there to eat lunch, right? So it's the support people that I get more concerned about rather than the government employees. The government employees will be fine. It's the support people that there is no way for them to make up those um, missed lunches, right, where they would they, they were getting tips. And I'm, I'm pointing that out as, as a very simple example. But there are lots of support jobs for government employees that um, that depend on the government running. Right. Here's the last quote. In addition, a shutdown could also affect developers and builders who receive government funding for their projects, slowing down new construction, says Tobin. Most of these projects are larger multifamily developments such as apartments, buildings, and complexes. So if we get this hiccup where, and no one's expecting a very long mm -hmm. shutdown, if it even happens. A lot of the um, services like FAA, I think there are the Senate and House are working a deal to to like not just do a ninety day extension, just mm -hmm. fund it for ninety more days, continuing resolution mm -hmm. kind of thing. Right. This really doesn't change anything. So okay, so some apartment complex that had was getting government funds, everyone has to wait for a month or two before they get more money to start building. It's also possible some of these places just got the money 
and they're going to build for three or four months before they run out again. And right. by the time they need the next tranche of money from the government, there's money there. Right. I mean, there aren't that many building projects, so let's face that. But the building projects that, that do exist, if they do need money in, in the interim while the government is shut down, they will not be getting that money. Uh, so my, my concern with that is that uh, construction is one of these things that uh, it's very difficult to make up that time, especially this time of year, because we're at the end of uh, September, beginning of October. So even if they, they lose maybe three weeks, now we're getting the cold season, so maybe that project is not even going to move forward, or it'll be delayed until the spring, something like that. Plus, um, construction workers, uh, it's going to get it's going to get harder to get the trades back and that sort of thing because we've talked about this. There is not a lot. Of, uh, there's not a large pool of them to begin with, and if the work goes away because of the funding, uh, you know they could relocate or just simply be unavailable to continue work, and that would delay the projects further. So that is a concern. But the number of those projects, let's face it, they are very few and far between. So it's more of a um, interesting intellectual exercise than a realistic hazard in the economy. Okay. How long do you think it, I mean, there's a lot of contention here because one of the political parties trying to spend a ton of money, the other one's saying, we're spending too much money, we need to reduce that, so they're fighting over the amounts to spend. That's the ultimately the reason why that we're having this problem. So how long do you see this lasting? Because, I mean, we it, the House and Senate aren't changing. The, they're, you know, one's Democrat, one's Republican. They're not changing their overall, even though Senator Feinstein just passed away, she'll get replaced with their Democrat. So it, it's not going to change. The, the, the houses are opposite each other, and they each have their own agendas, which is really the problem. Right. So um, it's very difficult for me to answer that without getting political and cynical. <laughs> well, how long do you think this lasts, though, if it shuts down? Uh, first of all, I'm less than convinced it will shut down, but okay. if it does... You know, traditionally, these shutdowns have been anywhere between three to six weeks. They really haven't been any any longer than that. So I don't see this lasting into 2024. I mean, I, I can't imagine this being months. That That's just untenable. Um, and it just costs everybody too much money. The thing to remember about government shutdowns, while on the other hand, on one hand, some of us uh, love it because it's like less government, yay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the flip side of that is, we thought we're still paying these people. It's not like we're saving any money. And government shutdowns actually cost us more money than the government running. Uh, and that, that's a separate video right there. But, uh, you know, to your point, how long will this last? If it happens at all, it'll be probably three to six weeks. That's traditionally what, how long these things last. And how, it won't really affect the housing market. Uh, it, it will affect it. If the longer it lasts, the more it will affect it. If it's a short shutdown, it really won't won't affect it. With mostly buyers buying cash or high down payment amounts. We don't have a lot of VA FHA people buying. It's mostly, I mean, if anything, it'll just be the cash buyers will be winning out, right? Oh, absolutely, because they'll be the only ones uh, able to play. Right, in the resale market. Yep. Okay. So, hope you had fun. Um, if you happen to be a Miami uh, person uh, and, and you would like to recommend uh, a place for us to try to have dinner, let us know because we're here for one more night. Uh, so please let us know. We'd love your recommendations. Anything we shouldn't miss in, in Miami. Again, you've got one shot at this because we've got one more night. So uh, let us know and we'll see you in the comments. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.